Welcome to Out of the Office. I'm your host, Kaylin Spickler, bringing you ideas for your next out of the office adventure. You've got to get that bird's eye view of the valley. Off the couch and away from video games. If there was one event I would keep inventing, this is the baby. You've got a few things in store. Every month we sit down with business owners, regional experts, and everyday people to talk about all there is to offer in the Roanoke region. That's the thing, right? Like, there's always so much fun stuff to cover on a podcast. My favorite day. They're having a blast. We are loving it. We have such a fun episode in store this month that I am so excited to share with all of you. First, we have Treehouse Tavern owners Lee and Scott to talk about their newer restaurant in Roanoke County, which... I think we all are so excited to eat there after hearing from them and learning more about their restaurant. And then we have recreation programmers from the Brambleton Center joining us to talk about the new art studio. So stay tuned for all kinds of new fun to get you out of the office. With us now, we have Scott and Lee from Treehouse Tavern, as well as Carly Foster from Roanoke County Economic Development. And Carly and I are so excited to have Scott and Lee from Treehouse Tavern in the studio to talk about their newer restaurant to the Valley. And looking at the list of awards and recognitions you all have won in such a short amount of time, I feel like we have Taylor Swift in the studio with (laughs) us. Um, So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Good yes, we're so excited to have you. Could you take a moment to introduce yourselves? Uh, Scott Markham. I am uh, obviously Lee's husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of handle the day-to-day operations of the restaurant. Um, so I could go in depth, but that would bore you to tears. <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, and I'm home with our three kids. I do the social media, all the emailing, making appointments, making lists, anything we need typed, all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm not at the restaurant working so much right now. Well, that works out really nice then with you being able to stay at home then too. Yeah. Yeah. And so you guys are both from the Valley. Have you stayed here since you were born or did you go out and about? (laughs) For the most part, um, a couple of, uh, stints traveling up, lived in Northern Virginia working, um, in, for Chili's actually moved, uh, to Harrisonburg after that, opened up that restaurant, and then finally... You opened up the Chili's in Harrisonburg? Yep. Mm-hmm. yep. I'm from Harrisonburg. Oh, okay, well, I went to JMU. Okay. That's my Go only Deuce. away time, so... <laughs> <laughs> went to JMU and came back to Roanoke and met Scott while I was student teaching, so... That's so fun. Was... Have you eaten at the Chili's? I, of course <laughs> I've eaten at the Chili's. Chili's is my favorite, just like everyone else in Roanoke. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. Very cool. Okay, well, so let's start with the beginning, the vision for the restaurant. So what was the inspiration behind the name Treehouse Tavern? Um, I mean, we've talked about opening a restaurant since we met, um, but this particular place kind of was what started with the name, I think. Um, And we had a friend who had a retail business downtown Roanoke called The Treehouse, um, which closed. Um, so when it did, I asked her if we could borrow the name because we just thought it really fit the vibe we were going for. Um, a tree house is kind of a gathering place, but more, you know, fun or a little bit more of a hideaway. Um, and the tavern can kind of mean the same thing for adults. So the combination just kind of seemed to work. Um, and I think it conveys that we are family friendly, but, it, you know, it's still a tavern. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's a little bit more of a like whimsical aspect to it I guess that's so fun yeah I definitely agree with how the name goes with the atmosphere the restaurant it's super it ties in super well with each other thank you yeah the treehouse tavern has really become an essential hub on Benton Mountain and you even won silver for the bar where everyone knows your name which for a new restaurant I think is super impressive um, and really highlights the support you're receiving from the local community going off being a new restaurant since you won platinum for being the best new restaurant how long has the treehouse tavern been open two years it'll be two years in august officially it it was two years this month that we took the space over um but we had many we started cleaning too many months of (laughs) cleaning and um, rearranging and uh so we finally got open in the summer of 2022 Okay. And then had our baby in the fall of 2022. Wow. <laughs> Which everybody should experience. 
Um, but yeah, the I think that award was one of the more meaningful ones to us. Um, you know, we're we're proud of the food and glad that that was recognized. Um, the new restaurant was also meaningful because you can only get that once. Right. Um, so yeah, those two were probably some of the more meaningful awards to us. Yeah. Yeah. Have you guys noticed like regulars coming in? Like, do you really feel like you know people's names and they know you all? We're still For learning sure. names, but yes. the faces. <laughs> Especially definitely. me because yeah. I'm not there as right. much. Um, but we definitely have a group of re- very regular regulars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you awesome. know, in, in reflection, it was funny because one of our key employees we, I was chatting with and we were standing there noticing that like nobody ever sat at the bar when we first opened. So it was almost like everybody was afraid to go to the bar. Uh, but the dining room was filling up. And I said, when do you think we'll have the bar filled? And now in hindsight, we look back on that comment and it was just just a matter of time. And now it's like the bar is always full and it's always the regulars and they have their seats. And it's just, <laughs> um, you know, it's a, it's a cheers moment. It really is. Yeah. You're That's probably fine. not old enough to know about cheers, but I'll tell you that later. <laughs> I was just thinking, like, glasses clinking cheers. <laughs> oh, you have to know the song where everybody knows your name. Yeah. Yes. Aww. you got to look that one up. Okay. It's, it's, it's worthy. Oh, I will. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, I'm glad to know the reference now. Um, so you guys really have thought of everything from the outdoor space to the vegan menu. So I definitely would love to dissect those. And I think first we want to talk about the outdoor space. So complete with outdoor cooking and the patio. That's definitely a big draw. And clearly the community sees it as such because you all won platinum for that and silver for the pet friendly patio. So it's also probably a big factor into winning platinum for the family friendly restaurant. True, true. We eat, our own family eats there every day and we have three kids of very different ages. So being outside is always ideal. They're not to be contained. (laughs) Um, It really is kind of making what we're looking for as a family. Mm -hmm. Um, We have friends with kids in the area. Our kids go to Back Creek and Cave Spring. Um, So it's a lot of families that come up. Um, And same with pets. I mean, we love our pets. We even, you know, have people call ahead on colder days and ask if they can sit outside because their dog is with them. And we'll oblige, of course, Um, you know, but they're cold, but (laughs) the pets are happy. (laughs) But uh, yeah, it's a it's a unique situation. Um, you know that I think tying into what you're saying is, you know, seeing a family eating with their kids inside, and then that same family, I uh, see them outside, and it's a totally different dynamic. The parents are calm outside, and the the kids are playing, mm-hmm. whereas it's total opposite when you're on the inside because they're constantly trying to juggle and catch things from breaking. Yeah, and, I mean, there's know. only so many table activities kids exactly. will tolerate. But they can run around and be free <laughs> and just let all the energy yeah, out. But also and, adults, too. Um, I mean, we're on top of a beautiful mountain, and yes. people come up there. People live up there because of that. People come visit because of that. So, um, I mean, we would be silly not to take advantage of that and the beautiful view across the street with the barn and the willow trees and I mean it's just kind of picture perfect um so we definitely plan on continuing to add to that and having live music outside okay wow well that'll be something to look forward to yeah yeah and are there any other expansions or service offerings that you are looking to add in the future just to give everyone a heads Mm up um I'll let you start with that one. I'm sorry. Well, last summer we added a second patio. So when we got the building, there was an existing patio. We've added a second elevator patio um, and an outdoor bar, um, but we didn't really get to use it because they weren't finished. I mean, we like we said, our family uses it every day. But um, so we'll definitely be putting that to use. Um, The outdoor cooking is something we're really trying to getting some kind of direction from some local um, uh, like hardscape landscape uh, specialists to 
put in the, the cooking areas where it needs to be and, and trying to get our heads wrapped around how we're going to serve because adding these, this space is a, a tremendous amount of seats. Mm -hmm. So not trying to overload the kitchen, but isolating those people in that area to eat what's prepared outside maybe mm -hmm. so that it takes that pressure off. But, uh, you know, putting the fine final touches on that is um, is pretty much all that's left. We yeah, were a little I mean, bit we're behind last be year getting... trying to get all that done. But, yeah. Um, I um, think this season we're ready to hit it running. Yeah, and we're always adding, like, toys and games and place things for the kids. and. Um, Everywhere you turn, there's going to be a little but I another do, child I think engagement of some sort. We so. hope by this summer everything is kind of laid out and landscaped and just ready to use and then all that's left really is the fun stuff like toys and games mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> that's super exciting and i know the bit mountain community will really appreciate some additional entertainment options up there. Yeah. yeah yeah and so i think the intentionality behind offering the vegan options on the menu is really interesting and is something i'd love for you all to talk about the reasoning behind that and just sort of how that fits with that particular community or that area of the county? Um, I mean, our menu started out very meat focused with um, everything revolving around the smoker and the grill with burgers and sandwiches. But my mom has uh, the alpha gal allergy, so she cannot eat red meat or pork. Um, so we obviously want her to eat at our restaurant. Um, and we've seen how hard it is for her to eat out because there's very little awareness about this particular allergy. Um, so a lot of times what we end up doing is making a vegan dish that you can add chicken to. Then we can accommodate vegans as well. But for someone like her that just can't eat the red meat or the dairy, then we just add the chicken. In addition to that, you know, the um, Scott Sloppy Chicken, which is a great um, alternative for your mother or anyone else with alpha-gal uh, sensitivity, that's, that's been, you know, very popular. Um, a lot more notoriety is becoming, you know, people are becoming more aware that they do have options, um, but a lot of people just don't know about it. Um, I feel like we're a little bit ahead of the curve on that. So trying to, you know, having a family member that suffers from it obviously makes us a lot more aware. So, you know, being sensitive to their needs is definitely, you know, very appreciated in within the community. So, um, you know, not only that, but gluten-free is another issue that people fight with and you know, struggle with. Uh, we try to offer that with um, a bread alternative for the sandwiches and as well as a pizza crust. Um, so trying to give a little bit to everybody. It's, yes. it's challenging though. So. Yeah. <laughs> so some of the safe foods that people with alpha gal can eat that I know my mom has missed in other restaurants are like the french fries, mm -hmm. chicken tenders. We don't fry anything else in our fryer. Um, we have a vegan pizza, a few salad dressings, and then all of the barbecue dishes are available with barbecue chicken instead of pork. Okay. Wow, that's really cool. You guys definitely spent a lot of time <laughs> thinking about that and just making sure there was something for everyone. Well, we would, I mean... It comes with about 12 years of yeah. uh, note-taking. So. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, like Kaylin said, you all have been so intentional throughout this entire process and everything you have brought into your business. But I think something that's really unique as well is just the community-focused aspect that you all have incorporated. So I know that you all featured a local artist through your new mural wall and I would just like to hear a little bit more about that as well. Um, yes, Maggie Perrin Key is a local artist and she has a few murals around town. Um, we've been friends for years so I just always knew I wanted her art in whatever space we ended up. Um, it just brings a lot of life. Um, it was kind of a drab building when we got it and I think it's added so much color we added to the outside, um, which I noticed one day because I had to park across the street and I saw how plain it looks when there's nothing in the, no one in the parking lot. It was just this white nothing in a gray parking lot. Um, so she painted huge leaves all along the front and it really makes it stand out. Um, and you, you walk past that down the sidewalk, and then you hit the atrium, and you hit more leaves, and then you come yeah. in the dining room, and you have more of her stuff on the walls. Yes. So it definitely is better than just the stark white on white. Yeah, on. it just feels more vibrant, like there's more life there. Um, 
and she was actually just featured in a magazine. She's ha- She has quite a few mur- murals around town now. Um, so I'm glad that we got some of her work before she's too famous. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Before she's also Taylor Swift. Yes. <laughs> Um, well, you also won silver for best place for lunch and gold for can't miss daily specials. So I would love to hear a little bit about what you have for lunch and what you kind of see as the popular items and also maybe some of the daily specials. Well, we, we're trying to really use what we have to kind of reincorporate into something new. Um, you know, an example of this, we have meatloaf, which is wildly popular. So we decided to do a, a twist on that, and we used a stuffed jalapeno inside of the meatloaf. So it was a stuffed like a jalapeno popper, popper inside of the meatloaf. Whoa. And it was really good, and um, we'll continue to do that. Um, the you know the spins like you know traditional caesar salad somebody asked if we they could do chicken tenders on it well of course you know i mean anything's possible but it's um trying to think a bit you know uh, yeah, I mean, more openly it's... about well let's try this or let's try that but a lot of times it's recommendations from customers or you know the the kitchen staff or the chef or somebody will have an idea that we'll just try and it catches on like wildfire <laughs> Um, as far as lunch, we it's traditional tavern fare. We've got burgers, sandwiches, salads. Um, but like you said, we have the traditional stuff, like a regular tavern burger or chicken salad sandwich. Um, but then we also have some unique burgers, like the bacon and brie is really popular, or a pimento burger with our homemade pimento cheese. Um and then as far as specials, our most recent popular one was the prime rib that we featured for Valentine's Day that we've gotten really good feedback on. So we're going to continue to have a steak feature on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, and we do have a lot of support from the locals, but it's been a year and a half and they're ready for some new things. They, <laughs> they keep coming even if we don't have features some nights, but I know that they're ready for... And, you know, to the locals, um, I said in the past, and we've said it many times, we could not have done it without the local support. And I think that's what was missing in the past. And we've just really engaged with the local community. And it's just, it's it's proven to be a very fruitful venture for us and them and prevents them from having to go down the mountain or, you know, to, to go anywhere to eat. But those features, those specials keeps it, you know, keeps it fresh and it keeps them wanting to see what's next or what's new or, um, but beef is what's for dinner. For sure. <laughs> yeah, they, they've been a fan of the state. Yeah. Um, but I think too, not just as far as food specials and features, they're, they're starting to ask for special nights like trivia, bingo. Mm-hmm. We're definitely going to get into karaoke. <laughs> oh, wow. um, we've heard that some, a group of teachers would love to do karaoke, so no I names will be cannot mentioned. wait for that. <laughs> <laughs> but we're excited about that. Um, we actually have all the equipment. We're just trying to make, you know, it's going to be on a Thursday. Is it next Thursday or this Thursday? Yeah, I don't know. But. Of course, it seems like something comes up always, yeah. but Life. we'll That's make it happen. Thing. Yeah, no, that's exciting. And I, I mean, I speak for the community. Roanoke County is so happy to have you all there. And you really have become the heart of Bent Mountain. So well, we're you. excited. Thank you. To that really you. means a lot. Yeah. Um, so I think it's time now for the game that we play every episode, which is Next Level Adventure. And so just looking through your social media posts and through the website, I thought a perfect adventure for you all to level up would be a springtime picnic. We're not quite at spring, but I feel like people are starting to get ready. The weather sometimes makes it feel like spring. So how would you elevate a springtime picnic in Roanoke? I mean, we've just got so many places to go right around Mm us um so you traditionally think of or at least I traditionally think of a picnic as kind of like cold food but I mean we have places five miles down the road so you could even take a pizza um but I mean we still have like chicken salad pimento cheese things you could pack for a traditional picnic um but we're only three miles from the parkway exit which is milepost 136 um gap we're only five miles from the Bottom Creek Gorge Preserve, five miles from Amrine's Winery. So that's a definitely an elevated picnic if you take your food to the winery. <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, I mean, I think there's just so many options um, so close that really you could pick anything from our menu to take on a picnic. Absolutely. Um, But I think we will remember that and try and make some packaged we we've talked we've, we've more and more about, about adding for, from day one pre-packaged stuff yeah. for people to grab and go and this is a great time to do it when people are doing just that and going on picnics yeah, yeah that'd be awesome yeah all i gotta say is i'm hungry now I know. oh same we did not eat before we came <laughs> i hope you can edit the rumbling <laughs> stomachs here well, we really are just so impressed with you all. I feel like I've just been sitting here just so amazed the entire time. I think you oh, guys have you guys. thought <laughs> about everything just so well. And I think you make, at least to me, you have made starting a restaurant look very easy. However, I know no. it's not that. His well, extens- my magic is working. Yes, yeah, his <laughs> extensive <laughs> experience, um, I think, is what makes that happen. But Well, it's just, you know, I think, it's taken us 10 years to do it, but I think that 10 years has given us a lot of insight. Um, and you talk about intentionality and things of that nature. It's just, uh, you never want to rush into this. Um, and that I think is the, the result of 99% of the failure is not enough planning. And it's just, um, you know, you got to think before you leap. So. Yeah. Well, and I think it's interesting to hear how you guys have basically created a restaurant that you were looking for, like for your yes. own family to take. Um, and so I think it's just been neat to see the community response because clearly a lot of other people in the community were looking for the same <laughs> things you all were looking for. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's a community of families and we're a family. So mm-hmm. I, th- I think we know what a lot of families want just from what we want. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are appreciative of you all being here. You, To the listeners, you may think we have listed off a lot of awards, which we have, but we didn't <laughs> even cover all of the dining awards that the Treehouse Tavern tallied up this past year from the Roanokers Dining Awards. Visit them to see why they also won Platinum for Best County Restaurant and Hidden Gym, as well as Silver for Best Barbecue, best chili and best wings that makes a dozen awards and it is a place you don't want to miss thank Thank you guys for being here thank you thank you carly for being here thank you we are back in the studio and with us we have anna jones and emily hannah welcome hi good morning why don't you guys introduce yourselves before we get started on all the fun sure uh so Emily and I are recreation programmers Mm -hmm. at the Bramilton Recreation Center, and we kind of split um, split up the programs and um, each 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 behind the scenes duty um, and and we also tag team too. So like interviews together. Oh no! Hey, have you done this thing before? I'm missing a pack of fifty beads. So. (laughs) The weirder, the more likely we are to work together on it. Yes. Okay, so the we, dynamic duo. Yeah. So any any of the um, programs that you see on the schedule at mm-hmm. Bramilton Center, most likely we've planned them, unless they're youth services, which we have a, another crew that handles those. But um, yeah, every day is an adventure at the Bramilton Center. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely want to talk about some of those things. So first, we were kind of talking with our earlier guest about spring is on the horizon, or at least people are getting excited for oh, yeah. spring. So what does spring have in store at the Brambleton Center? Absolutely. We're, we're really excited for spring. Registration just started this past Monday. Um, so we have a whole um, new list of classes that are out and available for uh, sign up. So um, we've got quite a few new classes as well as new instructors that we're uh, really pumped about. Um, some that have approached us, um, interested in teaching, that have uh, great talent. So one that I'm personally really excited about is a new quilting class. Wow. Um, yeah. So um, we have a brand new instructor. She's really passionate about um, teaching um, beginners, but also uh, more advanced. She could definitely yeah. work into teaching more advanced and inter- intermediate sewing too. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So sure. um, we're excited to have her on board and um, along with, with a few others. Oh, yeah. So we have a new wellness instructor who is going to teach a mobility class. So that's kind of stretching. It's kind of movement. Um, I think of it as yoga for impatient people. (laughs) 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Someone like me could survive that yeah. better than a more meditative approach. Okay. Um, okay. That sounds like it's up my alley too, because I got in trouble in my college yoga class for laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Because you have to be so quiet. You do. And if you're, if it's a breath thing and you're yeah. trying to relax, yeah, maybe you got to get your woos out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's exciting. That's a very unique offering, both of them. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So we're, we're excited for, for some new, um, we also have, I can share um, another new instructor who um, is going to teach a stress management class. Okay. So it'll be a multi-week class where each week focuses on a different area of stress. Um, so it'll be more interactive. It's not like you'll be sitting at a desk taking notes the whole time. He wants there to be some mind- mindful movement mindful. Mm-hmm. and, um, you know, working together within the group. Okay. Um, so that's another new offering we, that we haven't really had before. So and I'm it's excited for that. to me, it's kind of a nice summary of all of the options for really specific niche classes that right. you can take with us. So that's, it's, it's a cool time for yeah. that instructor to come on board Yes, um, and look at it, different, I don't want to say weird stuff, but <laughs> different leisure activities that contribute to a, a stress reduction okay. lifestyle. Okay. Interesting. A low stress lifestyle. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll be curious to find out what kinds of tips he shares. Absolutely. So another fun surprise that has been in the works for a little bit. Do you guys want to share? Ooh. <laughs> arts. Is it the arts? The arts studio, yes. perhaps? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's a big debut. Yeah, we had a big day yesterday. Um, still recovering a little bit, maybe. For, I don't yes. Know. It was busy, but it was good. We had... Um, a soft opening, I would say, um, okay. to welcome folks into our new art space. Um, it'll be pottery as well as um, other art classes. Yes. So um, we had quite a few people come out. I counted over 30 mugs were made wow. last night. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were helping um, coordinate that and get supplies rolling and the clay and um, assist. Emily, do you want to share any more about I, uh, the event last night? some young people through some tears. Um. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, like crying tears. <laughs> yes, smiles oh. by the end, but pottery is okay. a, it's a, it will test you. I can imagine. Process. I really don't think I like can do it or have the patience. Mm, How long does it though. take to make a mug? Did you guys, were you mm. able to like notice yesterday? We actually did a practice mug ahead of time so okay. we got to experience um it probably took at least an hour, an hour. yeah i'd say wow. but once again you can adapt it to being an impatient person <laughs> you're right with the <laughs> stress know, management yeah. class <laughs> well or in general it's yes. good instruction we we'll had a couple that turned into pencil holders which is fine okay. you know not yeah. every mug is meant to be a mug <laughs> so uh, we, yeah. we gotta pivot, pivot <laughs> sometimes but yeah. um yeah, it was it was really great. It, I would say yeah, probably about an hour to make a mug. Okay, yeah. Yeah. all right. But you should you should lots come of try smiles. It. Um, we also had a separate arts instructor with us, so the pottery okay. instructor coached people through some of those challenges. She's very adept at um, getting people from a frustrated place mm-hmm. to one where they're like in a better flow state okay. and are more receptive to trying something that's hard. Um, so she was there and it was really nice. Yeah. (laughs) Um, a separate arts instructor was also able to join us and she did jelly plate prints. Wow. Uh, so it's kind of like printmaking. Okay. Um, which is, you're not carving out your own stamp. You're using different textures and different kinds of paints to like layer an image. She did some really cool things, um, with people who were, who participated with her as well. And it was nice to be able to offer more than one interactive option. Okay. So some people left with two items of art of their own making, um, some with just one or the other. But very fun. Either way, there was something for everybody. Mix of ages, lots of smiles. Good, good, I'm sure. Um, So a thing that brought a smile to my face, actually, when looking at some of your spring programs was the Make Your Own Pie Day or Pie Day Bakeware Workshop. It's kind of a mouthful. Yes. (laughs) But so fun regardless. Yeah. 
So that'll be on Pi Day. That will be on Pi Day, which is March 14th. Okay. Registration for that is open now. The goal is to get people to throw their own bakeware. So like a pie dish. Like like, like throw the, it the, the, on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh, true. True, I'm using too much jargon. <laughs> I know all Wait, the arts are you now. meaning like throw it in the kiln? <laughs> well, uh, so when you... We can explain it. If you, yes, we can explain please, it. There's more than one modality for working with clay. So you can like carve it into a shape and then roll it up a certain way. Okay. Kind of, you know, like Plato style. That's hand building. Okay. And Plato style is really a reductive way to describe that. And it's a... But we, you know, we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> for it in daylight. Um, the other way that you can that you're probably thinking of that people think of when they think of pottery mm-hmm. is to take a big clump of clay and put it on a potter's wheel and you sit yes. in front of the spinning wheel and you have to like build it up into this big shape and then kind of push it down into what it's yeah how most people would make like a bowl okay or a, a cup uh, and the terminology behind that is that you take the clay and you throw it yes. down on okay. the wheel, like you want it to splat. Yes. So you're so they are going to be making their own their own pie, day. pie dish. Yes. So fun. And then they get to wash hands and eat a bunch of pie and eat awesome. pie. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that sounds so great. It'll be fun. Yeah. Yes. We have spots yeah. available, so if you're interested, all of the flavors out. will be there. Oh, good. You know, my <laughs> favorites are uh, hot and cold pie. So that's. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All pie. All of them. <laughs> All the pie. <laughs> well, I think that is super fun and creative. And another thing that I am looking forward to is Treetop Quest opening. Yes. And is that on the horizon? Are tickets going on sale soon? They are, yeah. So opening weekend is actually coming up um, at the beginning of April on okay. April 6th. Um the spring and fall operations are weekends only, mm-hmm. um, but once the summer hits, um, you'll be seeing um, the course open from Tuesdays through Sundays. Okay. Um, but you can actually start buying tickets on March 1st, um, so be on the lookout for that. Yes. And um, you actually save $5 when you sign up in advance online, so okay. make sure to get your tickets in advance, get that di- discount. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to... Um, all of that and people in the tree yeah yes. I know they were doing all of their um the course inspection the course inspection the gear inspection getting everything freshened up ready to go for a new a new season so lots of lots of fun loading out at explore park yes yes that will be fun I can't believe it's already that time of year for treetop quest to be opening again absolutely I know well, before we close this episode of the podcast, it's time for our little game, Roanoke Rapid. <laughs> so this is kind of like Fast Money on Family Feud, um, oh, okay. but except there's no wrong answers because there's no way for us that. to be able to do that. <laughs> so I will just give you each a different word um, and you just say the first thing that comes to your mind. Okay. Got it. it. All right, so <laughs> first word for Anna is pottery. Mug. Yes, okay. First word for Emily is outdoors. Nice time. Yes, perfect, perfect, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> okay, Anna, pie. Apple. Okay, that's Ooh, a good one. Yeah, yeah. love an apple pie. <laughs> the ice cream. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Emily, yours is on the greenway. Uh, bikes. <laughs> Dogs. No, Not a great perfect. Dogs. Yes. Yeah. Dogs. <laughs> okay, last one for each of you. You okay. both say okay. it at the same exact time. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> we'll coordinate. <laughs> favorite spring program. Like a new one or? Whatever. It oh. could be even like a past one. Okay. All right, we'll do it Wait, again. I'm not ready. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> I'm trying to think. What are Ready, we? set, spring program. Yoga. <laughs> it sounds like yoga is the winner. <laughs> yes. We yeah. love yoga. <laughs> too well, many to pick. Yeah. It, I yeah, mean, really. Yeah, <laughs> that was unfair for me to even ask. Yeah. The options are Do you endless. want to know who our favorite children are next? <laughs> 
Well, I appreciate both of you being on the podcast and sharing not only what's happening at the Brambleton Center, but also the larger Parks, Recreation, and Tourism Department. Absolutely. It was so fun. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you.